Okay, everybody, I've got something that I think is interesting and it's going to be quite useful if you're making more than one thing that is the same thing. And to explain that a little bit better, we're going to take a look at our elevator that we made in another tutorial. I'll link to that tutorial below because I show how to make this elevator, but we do it with Verse and Blender, actually, for that matter. We we just make things in Blender and bring it in. So get, get our bacon there and then we'll go into this elevator and continue on our way up. And we get our next one. And I don't know if you noticed, but that elevator went a little bit quicker. So anyhow, we're going to learn how to do that efficiently. OK, so we're inside a UEFN and I'll show you here the setup. We've got our box elevator. We've got a trigger to make it go. We've got these two pylons on either side to sort of give it a visual reference uh, for the players. And then we've got another one here. Oops, that's our bacon. Uh, we've got another one here with our trigger and our pylons. And then up here we go to get our second set of bacon. That's the setup of the scene here. Now, the coolest thing that I really want to draw attention to is that it is easy to keep duplicating this. So essentially what we've done is we've made it an elevator device, but it works in verse. It's not a cinematic. Um, cinematics are actually a pain, I think. I think verse is much easier to use. So anyway, so let's cover that. And uh, you know what? I'll tell you what. If you want to sit through this for just a second, we'll just skip ahead. I'm going to make another one and show you how easy it is to do because I've already done these ones. So I was just going to lead you through the code. But if we wanted to make another elevator here, we can go up into landscape mode. And I'm just going to sculpt something here. We'll just bring this. We'll bring this up pretty high, something like this. What we need to do actually, before we go too far with that, let's go back into selection mode, grab our elevator trigger. Actually, we'll do one at a time. So what we want to do is we want to duplicate uh, our objects here. So we'll just, we'll click on them, hit Alt, and then move this up. And then take your finger off of Alt and then move it over. We'll grab the elevator, hold down Alt, and move that over somewhere there. And we'll grab the trigger as well. That's bacon. Don't want bacon. We want a trigger because we want to make the next elevator go as well. So hold Alt down, bring it up, and then just bring it over. We'll line this up a little bit better here. And then we'll move them all at once. So I'm just going to bring my trigger into here, like so. So when we step into the elevator, it thinks to get moving. There we go. OK, so we're good there. Now let's take a look inside of our outliner. We've got our elevator box. We've got a trigger. This trigger here is in, inside of the elevator box item here. So we're just going to drag that into our elevator box three so that everything stays organized in our details. And then when we click on the elevator itself, and move it up and down, the trigger goes with it. So let's just line these guys up. I think it needs to come to the left just a smidge, something like that. Yeah, that looks fine. It's down at the bottom. And we want to know how big to make this next mountain because this is a set uh, size. So let's move this over and rotate it zoop, like that. And then back to moving it and then down somewhere to there. Something like that, I think. And that'll give us an indicator of how high to make our mountain. Let's come down. Let's go into landscape mode. And we're just going to sculpt this thing up to about oh no that doesn't it doesn't go that high so hold shift and just bring this down a bit more okay and then we want to flatten the top so we'll go to flatten and just move around a little until you get something that makes sense let's go take a look well that's pretty good and then this is going to come up to here i think we could come a little bit higher to test that we're just going to go back into selection mode Go to our elevator, move it all the way up to the top of our pillars. And we can see we can come a little bit higher with our sculpt. So let's go landscape, uh, sculpt, and just come up a little bit higher, maybe a smidge higher. Flatten it. So you just hold, and then you can just flatten the area all around it. We could probably come out a little bit more. Something like that. And then um, back to selection mode, grab a deck. Hold Alt, bring it up, move it over, up a little. Let's take a look. Ooh, that's pretty good, actually. Let's rotate it a little bit. So when we step out, we're not going to uh, fall off. You know what's weird, actually, is that the joists are the wrong way. The carpenter inside of me says, hey, that's wrong, and then move it over. Something like that. Plus, it looks a little bit better, doesn't it? And that gives us our third elevator. 
Okay, so let's reset the elevator back down to the bottom. I think that could be bottom. Okay, so that's it. Now, the only thing that we do want to know is where the top of the elevator is supposed to go. So now that I've moved this down to the bottom, uh, I actually need to move it back up to the top. Probably to there. Does that look good? A little higher. So that's that's the top of our elevator. This is the only value that we actually need to know. And we can find that out over in our details panel here. And it says two, four, two, three. So that's pretty good. So let's uh, let's bring this back down to the bottom. And it looks a little weird. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to alt click this deck and move it over and just give ourselves a little bit more deck to play with. That looks good. OK, so now we can go into verse. Now my verse code is inside of the content browser, inside of Creative Devices and Game Manager. If you haven't seen the elevator tutorial, I recommend checking that out first because we're building on top of that. We're essentially taking all of the elevator code. So there's no more elevator code inside of the main Game Manager file. And we're moving it into an elevator device code. Uh, file. So it's its own file. This is how we keep verse a little bit more organized when we want to make stuff that we want to make more of. And I'll show you exactly why this is so cool. So inside of the game manager, uh, we've got our editables and the editables are important because we have to link an actual thing in the game to our code because we can't go ahead and we're, we're not going to be spawning this per se we're not because the creative prop is already placed in the game as you can see we've already figured out where we want our elevators to be so we've got three elevators in here now we've got this bottom one the second one and the top one and so these are already in place this is part of the game design the level design so that's why they need to be uh, set up as editables OK, so let's head back into verse. Now, hopefully this is not getting too confusing or anything, but if it is, let me know. OK, so very simple. This is all of our this code here is 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 where we've set up our things. So we need another trigger. So let's duplicate this trigger here and we'll call it elevator three trigger. And you can name these a little bit better. You could elevator top, bottom, middle, uh, cliff, whatever you want to call them. So this is just the trigger that that makes elevator three work. And you can make these anything, actually, which is really cool. And then we need to set up the elevator object, the object that is going to move. That's our creative prop. So I'm just going to call this one three. And then the last thing we need to do is set up our elevator device, which is our custom device that we're making. So this is a really, really cool part. And that's it. So that's how we can set it up inside of here for the game manager to be able to control these things in the code here. So same thing here. We're just going to set up how the trigger works. So elevator three and uh, we're going to subscribe to the triggered event and it's going to call elevator three triggered event. Now that doesn't exist, so we're going to go make that. So we should literally just copy, paste, shift tab to move this over because it puts it inside of that tab and rename it three and then elevator three move elevator. Now, each one of these is an instance, elevator one, elevator two, and elevator three, as we can see here, is an instance of the elevator device. They're all separate. They're all their own thing. They're all their own thing, but they're all the same box. So think of it like a replicator. If, if we wanted to think about it that way, we could say we're, we're replicating an item, uh, but it's its own item. So that's really cool. So this is it. This is all we have to do to set things up. Oh, actually, one more thing. We have to set up the final position. Now, do we remember that final position? I don't remember the final position. Let's go back one more down like that. That looks pretty good. Two, four, one, five. All right, back in the verse two, four, one, five. So the last thing that we need to do is set up where we want the elevator to go to. So we're going to just copy these three lines and I'll show you what they do in a second. So let's set this up three, three, three. So now we're controlling elevator three with this code two, four, one, and we'll set the speed to 40 as well. So so this sets up the custom parameters of our replicated device. Each one of these elevators has to have a place that it goes to uh, and a speed that it gets there. And each of them need to be told which prop to use. So let's change this one as well. Elevator three prop. Otherwise, it would control elevator two prop and it would go really weird. So 
So this is actually a very, very flexible way of working with objects on the screen that have to be animated. You can animate it in code, the movement of any sorts, rotation or, or position. OK, so let's go into our elevator code and understand why this is so powerful and why you're going to want to do it. So I haven't really changed anything in the move elevator. The move elevator thing is just what it is, other than to code the top position. Because remember, each elevator has to go to a different top position. The bottom position doesn't matter. It takes it from its original reference. So the place that you place it in is really important. You have to put it where you want it to be at the bottom. Uh, you can change this too. You can have them all be at the top or, or whatever, actually. You can probably change it to be anything you want. They could be in the middle. Yeah, they could have, they could actually stop on a floor and then go to another floor. So, but that's the coolest part of this code because right now we've got every elevator using this code. So if we change anything in here, then every elevator can be affected rather than having to do everything. If, say, for example, just so that I can wrap this together for you guys. Say, for example, I had move elevator uh, one and this one said two and this one said three. And then I make all of those functions down here. Move elevator one, two, three. That would be such a pain if we had anything more than maybe two. If you had 10 elevators in your, and it doesn't even have to be an elevator. It could be a ramp. It could be uh, an escalator. Who knows? It doesn't really matter. But the point is that we want to be able to do something in one place rather than a whole bunch of places. So inside of here, say we wanted to have the elevator break down and we could have a, a random number that says whether or not it breaks down halfway up or something like that. And then you would change your move elevator code, say, well, if if this is a broken down elevator, then it breaks down halfway and you're stuck in there for 10 seconds or something like that. Uh, and all elevators that have the option available of being a broken elevator would act like that. And you would only change it in here. OK, so let's cover this elevator device. So we've got an elevator device. It's just a class. It's a, it's a thing. It's a box. It's the thing that we're replicating. So just think about a class as just one thing. A, a box is a great example. That's the way I learned it a long, long time ago when I was learning uh, object oriented programming. It's just a box. Okay, it's a black box. And inside of here, we can set the top position. Right now, I've set it as a default value of zero. That will always change. So it's a variable. Uh, the next one is the elevator box. It's a creative prop. We know that when we brought it in from Blender, we made this box and we turned it into a blueprint down here. And this is my elevator box. And that is a creative prop, right? And then the last thing I put in was the elevator speed. And the de default speed is 20. So you can change this to anything you want. And this will change the speed of the elevator. So the, sec so the second elevator that I went into was double the speed. It was 40 instead of 20. And we set that here. So if we wanted, we could make the top one even slower, but 10. And it'd be even it would be a really slow elevator. And and maybe actually even cooler is every elevator can have its own music based on its speed. And again, you would only have to change that in here, which is really, really neat. Um, you could have an audio device play out. OK, so with the speed set to 20 by default, if you didn't set the speed, then that's fine. It doesn't matter. And these are our setters and every black box, every class we make should have getters and setters. We don't need any uh, getters in this case, but we do need setters. So these are all set, set and set. So the first one is a set final position and we're using the Z to go up and down. But keep in mind, you could change this up to be any kind of elevator you want. It could go at a diagonal, it could go sideways, whatever. Okay, we're going to set the prop because we want to know which prop we're moving when we use our move elevator function. And we already know what that is. And the set elevator speed, you can set this or don't, because remember the default is 20, which is our default or normal speed of what a elevator should move at. And then I've already covered all the elevator stuff in the last uh, tutorial, so check that out. But essentially, it just moves the elevator until it's reached the spot. And we're changing the Z of it to the top position, top pos. Uh, that we set up here, which is zero by default, but we set it inside of the game manager here. Any one of these. So this one's 900, this one's 1664, and this one's 2415. So we have to set the top position or the final position that it's going to rest in and the elevator speed and then that. And so just doing this should make the, the elevator work, the third elevator work. OK, so last thing to do that we don't want to forget is we got to go back into the game, select our game manager device that is on the stage here. Make sure to set up our triggers, which trigger we want to do 
the thing for the elevator three and which elevator prop. These are all props and devices that we want to link from the game into verse. So we can't forget to do this. I always forget to do it, uh, but I want to always be reminding everybody do this before you go any further. So we're going to go ahead and save that and then we will and then we'll launch the session and it still says I need to save it. <laughs> OK, we are in the game. Let's go and ride the elevators. OK, so the first elevator is moving at a speed of 20, which whatever that is, is this speed. It's not bad. And we get our bacon. Move to the next elevator, which is kind of cool. Keep on going up, watching out for that guy. I did a tutorial on. Get our bacon and go into the third one. And up we go really slowly. This is painfully slow. So 10 is no good. We definitely don't want an elevator moves at 10. But here we go, slowly up to the top. But you can see how all we have to do is just change a few lines of code or add a few lines of code, uh, connect up the props and we are up at the top, which is really quite cool. Anyhow, so hopefully that was interesting and useful to you. Uh, I think that when you're making more than one thing that is the same thing, this is the best way to go instead of making a bunch of functions inside of your game manager itself. So make your own classes, uh, make your own objects, make your own devices, and uh, then replicate them across the way and uh, make them more make them more flexible. So that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.